Thank you. Thank you, Christina. It is wonderful to be here at Bayside Council. I am super pumped up on Are You OK Day? And I think laughter is the, probably the best way to get through your troubles. <laughs> so I am here to hopefully provide some laughs for you beautiful people, which I believe I have the ability to do. Although my own son, Dancer, got a 13-year-old son who doesn't get me, <laughs> doesn't get my jokes. I actually did a gig. He came to a gig recently I did uh, with Shaquille O'Neal, the big-time NBA superstar. He only wanted to come because Shaquille was going to be there. And when he saw me perform afterwards, he said, Dad, I had no idea you could make people laugh like that. I said, mate, how do you think we got this house, you dickhead? So it is great to be here. Now I am fired up. You're probably all thinking, why aren't you on The Mars Singer? Who loves The Mars Singer? All right, three of you, I appreciate that. <laughs> you don't know what The Mars Singer is, it is a TV show on Channel 10. Uh, how can I describe it? A group of desperate celebrities wear masks <laughs> and sing, and I sit on a panel with other desperate celebrities, and we all try to make a living. It's not easy. I, I, I get in trouble for my terrible guesses on that show. You've got to try to guess who's under the mask. It's not easy. For four seasons, I guess everyone was Shannon Noll, except for one that actually was Shannon Noll. It's disappointing. It's a tough show, though, because you've got to guess who's under the mask. You've got to, and then often when the mask comes off, you've got to keep guessing. And you've got to look excited when you've got no idea who they are. <laughs> No, it's a, it's a great TV show and I'm super pumped up to be on it and you're a great crowd and I can see that. We're all relaxing after COVID, thank God for that. And, and, and good on you. I mean, well, it's still going, but anyway, we've got to move on. Remember when it was stressful? Every day we had to wait for Gladys's press conference. What time's the press conference? It's 11.30, what does that mean? <laughs> We had to wait for the number every day. Remember waiting for the number like you needed the final number for Powerball? <laughs> what number is it today? It's three. Where are they? They're in Manly. Off the speed bridge. <laughs> Keep them there. No, and no, no. And you wear, I, I appreciate people who wear a mask, but be, be consistent with your personal safety. I saw a guy on an electric scooter. I reckon he was going 90K an hour. He was looking at his mobile phone as he went. Had no helmet on, but he was wearing a mask. I thought, <laughs> I thought when that truck hits you, you're not going to get COVID, are you? So, no, it is great to be here. I am super pumped up, and you're the best crowd I've ever had. No, you are. It's the best gig I've ever done. I've never been more fired up. We're having the time of our lives. And I, I think I am a great performer. Good on me. Anyway, I pumped my own tyres up. My wife couldn't care less. Recently I did a gig and I, and I don't normally don't brag to my wife, but I said afterwards, honey, the crowd said I was amazing. She said, people are nice, aren't they? <laughs> Maybe I was amazing. I've got my family questioning me all the time. If you don't, I'm, I'm married to a beautiful woman. There's no doubt about that. We've been married a long time. People have been questioning how I got her for 20 years because <laughs> apparently she's a lot more better looking than I am. <laughs> I put a photo of her on Instagram recently. I got 100 comments straight away. Too good for you. Batting above the average. She's like you're not. Have you taken her hostage? <laughs> Why didn't include a guide dog in the photo? Now, I'm able to laugh with that. You know, they're funny comments from strangers. But when your own children start saying that stuff, I remember my son, he was seven, I reckon he was seven at the time. He came to me and said, Dad, I said, what, mate? He said, did you meet Mum after you got famous? <laughs> I said, why do you ask? He said, no reason. I said, you know, I actually did. And he goes, that makes sense, Dad. Oh, does it make take half an hour to put a jumper on me? You work that out, have you? I said, look at my face. He said, why? I said, because you've got this face, buddy. You want to start getting funny real quick, mate, I can tell you. No, he's a good kid and I'm very happy to be here and I'm very happy. You're a great crowd. Never forget that. And it's great that we're so close to the airport because I've got to go there after this. <laughs> I've got to go for a two o'clock flight, which will probably leave at six o'clock. <laughs> Qantas have shat the bed, haven't they? Cannot say that on my radio show because they sponsor the show. But um, no, I love Qantas. But yeah, what about when you turn, 
you turn up and they're not ready to go. I was at Gold Coast Airport a little while back. I mean, I'm 15 minutes early for my flight, guys. No luggage to go underneath. So I thought I could turn up 15 minutes early. And no, no, I couldn't. Got to the boarding gate with my ticket and the woman said, nah. I said, what? She said, you've missed it. I said, it doesn't go for another 15 minutes. She said, it's gone. <laughs> I looked through the window. There was a plane. had the stairs attached to it. I said, what's that? She said, that's the plane. I said, well, it's come back for me, hasn't it? She said, everyone's on board. I said, no, they're not. <laughs> 15C is right here. Anyway, no. Anyway, people are copying. I appreciate that. You're a great crowd. You're good on us. And I am a great person. There's no doubt about me. <laughs> Anyone here got a rescue dog? Anyone? No, you've all got cavoodles, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what it's like having or cats. Yeah, well, I've got rescue cats as well. The thing about having a rescue animal is one thing that you know. There's something wrong with them. <laughs> They're not giving away the good ones, I can tell you. But I can say that because I've had our rescue. I've had a rescue dog and I've had a rescue cat for 17 years and a rescue dog for 16 years, yeah? They are very, very, they're still with us, absolutely. And my dog, Barkley, he's a good dog, but he's had one little issue that he, he likes to bite people. <laughs> That's not easy in 2022. I grew up in the 70s, yeah, where dogs were allowed to bite kids, yeah? In the 70s, I'd come home and mum, a dog bit me, and my mum would go, what did you do? <laughs> a lot of victim blaming back then. Can't do that anymore. <laughs> and fair enough too. But he doesn't bite people that hard. He bit a kid in the park once. Only he only nipped it. It was a nip. And luckily the kid wasn't old enough to explain to his mum what had happened. His mum was on her iPhone, so I thought, I can cover this crime up right now. So, I'm saying, you're all right, mate. It wasn't a shark. Just relax. <laughs> You want some money? <laughs> Eventually the mum turned around and said, what happened here? I said, your kid just went crazy. Can you calm him down? He's freaking my dog out. So, no, no, Barkley, he's a good dog. He bit a woman. Look, she had dreadlocks. I'm not blaming the dreadlocks. But she went to pat, pat him and I said, don't pat him. She said, why not? I said, because he will bite you. She said, he won't. I said, he will. She said, he won't. I'm a dog whisperer. I said, well, guess what? I can see the future. <laughs> And I reckon your future's going to be great if you pat that dog. She said, watch this. And I watched my dog bite her. She looked at me like I hadn't predicted it. I said, yeah, you're a dog whisperer, but he's deaf. He couldn't hear it, all right? So... <laughs> he smelt the dreadlocks and he went for the kill. <laughs> no, I love, I, no, I do love Barkley. He's a great dog. One other thing that he does, Barkley like when we go for a walk, Barkley likes to do a number of poos on the walk, guys. Yes, yeah, he does about, he, I reckon he counts the amount of bags I've got and he always makes sure he does one more poo than the amount of bags I've got. And I know you cannot, your dog cannot poo and you've got to deal with it. I know that. He did a poo in front of a cake shop one day on a Sunday afternoon. People were fresco dining their mud cakes on the footpath and he gave them another option. They're looking at me like I'd ruin their weekend. And all I could find was a McDonald's cup because I'd run out of bags. But I put the poo in a McDonald's cup and I'm walking home with this stupid dog and a big cup of poo, thinking I've worked too hard to be in this situation. And I love being recognised. I love getting photos, but this is not a time I wanted to do photos with people. Two young women come and said, Easy, can we get a photo? And I'm like, I don't reckon it's a good time, girls. They, would not take, they wouldn't take no for an answer. I ended up with one under this arm, one under this arm. She's got trying to work out the reverse camera on her phone. I've got a cup of shit in her ear. <laughs> Eventually, the smell overpowered the three of us. <laughs> they look at me and go, What's that? I said, that's McDonald's new, <laughs> the new sit <citra. laughs> They've taken a real risk with this one. <laughs> anyway, no, so, no, I love Barkley. No, he also eats things he shouldn't eat, and sometimes that's a problem for me because it get, they get stuck on the way out. One day he was on the beach trying to do a poo, and he was, he was going for about a minute, and then I thought, no, nah, there's an issue here. He looked back at me like, yeah, I made a poor dietary decision. You need to come and sort this out. So I walked over him and, you know, trying to, you know, channel my inner Bondi vet. <laughs> and I, I pulled up his tail thinking, what am I going to find here? And it was a balloon. He had a balloon stuck in his bum. And I thought, I've got to get this one out. So I started pulling on the balloon thinking it will be a quick operation, but it wasn't. He must have had it coiled up in his lower intestine. So I'm, I'm walking away from my dog as the, the balloon is uncoiling. And it's still attached. I thought, how much balloon is in there? I reckon I was 10 metres away from him. I'm going to be home before long and he'll still be on the beach. 
And then I started to feel tension on the balloon, and he's starting to lose grip on the sand. This is turning into a slingshot. Again, that's when I get recognised. People walk past on the boardwalk and say, Yeezy! I'm down here like this. I said, what are you up to? I said, just walking the dog. <laughs> They're looking at me like a pretty weird lead you've got him on, mate. Anyway, it eventually came out and we got on with our day. No, I love Barkley. He's a good dog. I've got another rescue dog as well called Bubbles. Bubbles uh, turned up. He, she turned up to my TV show. She was meant to go to one of the uh, guests on my TV show. You you have a problem? And uh, that was all. It was a great TV moment. They couldn't have a dog in their flats, and we rang up the the, the flat uh, whoever controlled the flats, and they said you can have a dog. We presented her with Bubbles. My wife was watching that on TV, and my wife knows the inner workings of television. She said, "Did that woman really take that dog home?" I said, "I don't know." <laughs> She said, ring the producer. So I rang the producer and the woman hadn't taken the dog home. The dog, Bubbles, was still available. And my wife said, well, we're adopting Bubbles. So now we do have Bubbles. Bubbles is a beautiful little Shih Tzu cross with an underbite. She snores louder than a polar bear on the, on the whiskey. And Bubbles likes to sleep under our bed, which is not good for our romantic situation. Sounds like Dad's under the bed, to be honest. So, do you know what, Bubbles, when Bubbles turned up, the vet said the Bubbles needed a knee reconstruction. I'm like, oh, God, I don't know about this. You know, I've got a blockhouse to pay off. So I uh, thought I'd ring my brother Mick. I said, Mick, uh, Mick's not a, he's not a vet, but he's a realist. Um, he's 53-year-old cheesemaker who's single ladies. If you want a lifetime supply of Cracker Barrel, Mick's your man. You'll have to pay for it, though, to be honest. He's tired as a fish's asshole, but... Uh, I said, Mick, they reckon my new dog needs a knee reconstruction. Mick said, is the dog going to play professional rugby league, Dave? I said, I wouldn't have thought so. He said, no knee rego for Bubbles. And so, we love Bubbles. Bubbles is a beautiful dog. And, and him and Barkley, and we've got, we've got two extra cats during lockdown. Yep, two extra rescue cats. Beautiful. One of them did get run over, I'm not going to lie. But um, I don't know. That was when there was no cars on the road, so I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, but we've still got two beautiful cats, including Teddy, our oldest cat, who's 18, as I said, or 17 or 18. Teddy's been morbidly obese since about three months after we got him because I got told that you can just fill their kibble bowl up and they will self-regulate their food. That was a lie. Teddy blew up and has stained blown up. That's 18 years of a blown-up cat. He looks like a white bean bag, to be honest. We love Teddy, though, but the vet's still trying to get him to lose weight 18 years later. I said, mate, he's about 170 in cat years. He's okay with his weight, yeah? He doesn't have an Instagram account. He doesn't care, right? So the vet said, you're feeding him too much. I said, we're not. I reckon he might have a Uber Eats account. I don't know what's going on. But Teddy is still hunting. True story. I saw him in the backyard recently with a pigeon in his mouth. Now, I, I, I did not feel sorry for that pigeon for one second. If you are an animal with the gift of flight and you got caught by that fuck, I <laughs> No, I love Teddy and I, I love Barkley and I love you. And you are the best crowd I've ever had. And I've never been more pumped up. I'm about to go to Brisbane to do some shows. My wife is uh, she's not happy with my travel schedule and I appreciate that. And I've been doing touring, stand-up comedy and for a long time, including when the kids were real little. Remember, she, I was in Adelaide for a couple of weeks once and my wife rang me. And uh, No, actually, I rang her, to be honest, because uh, I was only working an hour a night. And, and I rang her because I was bored. And I rang her during the day. She said, what do you want? I said... I've got an issue. She says, I do too. I'm home with three kids. I said, well, I've got problems. She said, what are they? I said, I don't know what to do to that. <laughs> I'm at a loose end. I've watched every movie going around. I'm thinking about getting a massage. What do you think? And this is what she said to me. She said, why don't you eat your dick with a hammer? I'm thinking that is a left-field suggestion to my issue. Is that a new form of Reiki magazine massage I don't know about? I thought it would fill in the afternoon. I didn't have a hammer at the time. I'd have to find the local Bunnings, go there and see if they've got any hammers for that task, maybe get a snag before I deal with my own. Anyway, now I appreciate her bluntness and her uh, ability to uh, see that I am, uh, you know, anyway, I'm a good guy though and she should know that. I don't drink. I look like I do. I, I know. I'm, I know it's not an AA meeting, but I haven't had a drink for 30 years. Yeah, been sober for 30 years. And people can't, they can't wrap their head around that. They look at me and think I must be drunk or must have a hangover. Almost every single day someone will accuse me of having a big night the night before. 
I was at the Qantas Lounge one day. It was about nine o'clock in the morning. Woman behind the counter looked at me and said, gee, you must have had a rough night. I'd had nine hours sleep. I said, no, but I'm having a rough morning. She said, why? I just met a dickhead, to be honest. She said, when? I said, just now. She said, where? I said, just here. She's looking around for the dickhead. I said, yep, yeah, look in my glassy eyes. I oh, know I'm, I'm, I'm a non-drinking, um, non-drug taking at all. I don't do drugs. Although I have just started vaping, guys. You know, it's a scourge. I'm not going to lie. I haven't had a cigarette for 30 years and the bloody vape. I don't know. Someone handed me a they're like a highlighter. It's not good. And I'm ashamed of myself and I have to hide it from my own children. <laughs> Talk about parents like that. Look, that. I'm sucking on a high. It's ridiculous. My wife's angry about it. She's trying to get me off it, and I've got to get off it. Well, she rang me the other day. She said, I've Googled vaping causes erectile dysfunction. I said, honey, don't make me choose. <laughs> no, it's a terrible thing, and I, and I will get off it because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good guy, you know. And I'm, I did buy a house on the TV show The Block. That was uh, an interesting purchase, guys. Um, I didn't think it through. Uh, I was a fan of the show and I turned up to the auction and Scotty Cam just sort of convinced me. <laughs> My wife wasn't there. I texted her to say I'm bidding and she didn't get back to it. So I thought that's the green light to go for it. I ended up buying a house and that's who you want to, that's who you want to buy your, you, you know, that's who you want to buy your multi-million dollar house off. Amateurs who built them in a hurry. <laughs> My, word, my wife I eventually replied, she said, you bought that house? I said, yes. She said, don't tell anyone you bought that house. At the time, I was being interviewed live on television. So did I cop flack for that? Not at, only at home. Everyone was giving me, I, I was on the on front of the bloody newspaper, multi-million dollar blockhead, and it was a photo of me with the Instagram model who built that house. <laughs> It was so stressful. I had to get a loan of the National Bank. They didn't value the house like I did. They obviously weren't fans of the show. Then I had to get the house rented out because we didn't move in. I said, we're not moving in. You rent it out. And I was under pressure. The repayments were coming in. <laughs> I rang the real estate agent. I said, is someone going to move in? They said, oh, we've got one application. I said, we'll sign them up. They said, we're not sure. I said, I'm sure. They said, they've got a dog. I said, who cares? They said, they want to put in a, a doggy door. I said, they can put in a meth lab if they want to. Whatever helps them pay the rent. If you can get the banditos to sign a 10-year lease for their clubhouse, you sign that up. It's a stressful situation. Anyway, no, it's good. But I'm, I'm used to stressful situations. I do it all the time. I'm, no, I'm a good guy. I mean, I'm a... I'm a man of the people. I am, you know. You catch me. I go. I'm on Sydney. I'm on the trains. I'm on the. I'm on the. I'm on the light rail. Got the light rail. One. Oh, this is a true story, and I'm not making this up. True story. I got the light rail. I was going to Moore Park to do the comedy store, and I'm on there, and I was wearing a mask. When you had to wear masks, on, I think you just do it. Whatever. I was wearing a mask. There was no one else on the light rail carriage, and so I, I get on, and I'm sitting there, and that Redfern station, a bloke got on, and uh, he was definitely a meth enthusiast. There's no doubt about that. He could have sat anywhere, decided to sit right beside me. We're sitting there. I'm not saying anything. I knew he was staring at me. Then he goes, Yuzi, you're trying to hide, are you? I can see you. Look, I'm not trying to hide, mate. It's a government regulation. I'm not Michael Jackson in 1986. He said, well, I'm not wearing one. I said, I reckon COVID's the least of your problems, to be honest. <laughs> then I kid you not, this guy goes, you want to know what I've been up to today? And I'm thinking, I really don't want to know. I'll be a witness in a court case. <laughs> and I was right to think that. I kid you not, this guy goes, I stabbed two blokes. I go, hey. I said, well, good on you. You've had a good day. You have a good sleep and start stabbing again in the morning, right? But he must have felt guilty. He said they deserved it. I said, I'm sure they did, mate. I'm team stabby all the way. You stabbed because you care. He said they were trying to steal me drugs. I said, well, clearly they failed in that endeavour. 
Then he said to me, do you want to know what have you been up to? And I'm like, oh, I've got to step up here. He's got to know I'm a hard man as well. I said, oh, my, mate, I'm on the edge. Don't you worry about that. The law means very little to me. I didn't even tap on for this ride, so. <laughs> anyway, no, you are, you are the best crowd I've ever had. I've never been more pumped up. I'm so fired up. You're a great crew and put on us. And I do gigs everywhere, guys. You'll get, I can't wait. The, the, the cruise ships are back. I go on cruise ships and do gigs. And that's, they can be tough because like, you guys will get on with your day after this. On a cruise ship, the crowd stays with you <laughs> for a whole week sometimes. Remember I was lined up to the buffet the morning after a gig on the ship. I'm lined up to the buffet and the bloke behind me said, you say, what are you doing here? I said, I'm doing comedy on the ship. He goes, yeah, I saw you last night. I said, where do you think I was going to be today, mate? <laughs> I don't have a jet ski to bug off every day. Later on the same day, the same guy grabbed me. He said, you're stalking me, aren't you? I said, we're on a boat, you can. Get used to it. Anyway, no, he's a good guy and I appreciate the photos. I do love photos. I, well, I love them. I had, a, I had an experience the other day where a bloke said, can I get a photo? I said, sure, mate. And I went and put my arm around him. He said, no, nah, just on your own. Oh, that's weird. You get one of these off the internet, mate. <laughs> he said, do a pose. Well, it's a Target catalogue, is it? He said, I want you to look angry. I said, I am angry. He said, look real angry. I said, all right. He said, put your finger up to the camera. I said, okay. He said, why am I doing this? He said, I'm going to send it to my mate. He hates you. <laughs> Join the club. But anyway, no, my wife doesn't hate me. She loves me, and fair enough too. I'm a good guy. I don't, I'm not perfect, though. I do things wrong. Recently, I started reading a Kindle in bed. I don't know. Yeah, I like the Kindle, the e-reader. I'm reading in bed. You don't have to put the bedside light on. I thought that was the right thing to do. I was reading it every night in bed, yeah, until one night when she snapped. We're lying there. I'm reading my Kindle. She said, you're ruining my life. <laughs> well, that's a strong statement. I'm just trying to finish my chapter. She said, that's what's ruining my life. I said, what do you mean? She said, you're addicted to that Kindle. Well, yeah. Oh, wow, I am. You really lucked out in the husband's sakes, haven't you? You could have a gambling, heroin-addicted, womanising husband who's never home, but you've got yourself a dirty, stinking Kindle reader. <laughs> Some real asshole who comes home early every night to read a Kindle just to ruin your life. I said, how is this ruining your life? He said, it's so bright. When you read it, I can't go to sleep. And you read it every night. I'm like, okay. Can you shut your eyes? <laughs> it's not a flare. She said, I can read it through my shut eyelids. I said, well, get a mask, you dickhead. I didn't say that. <laughs> not all that conversation happened out loud. Her half of the conversation happened out loud. Mine was an internal monologue. What I actually said when she told me, explained the Kindle was ruining my life, I said, I'm sorry, honey. I won't read it. She said, you can turn it down. I said, I don't know how to do that. Can you help me? And together we turned it down so low that I could no longer read it. She went straight to sleep. I stared at the ceiling for five hours, wondering what heroin was like. Now, we are a great couple, there's no doubt about that, and we've got a great family and they're very good. And, uh, and, and, I'm a, and I, every Friday night I drive my son to his rep basketball, which can be an hour, hour and a half drive some nights, and just me and him in the car. He looks at his TikTok the whole way, doesn't even speak to me. Remember one night we got out there and he, he said, just drop me off out the front, you go find a park. I said, mate, you're not LeBron James, okay? <laughs> then he goes, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. I said, I think you would, mate, I've got the car. <laughs> It's a fair dribble to get you home, I can tell you, if you're on your own. Honestly, no, 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 I, love, I love him, though. He scored two points. It was well worth a drive. Um, two daughters as well. They're beautiful. And uh, they, I'll tell you what, they, I'm not going to lie, though. They're 9 and 11, and the best thing about the pandemic was their ballet concerts were cancelled for two years. <laughs> Any parent will know, with little kids doing ballet, it's like a hostage situation. They lock the door so you can't get out. <laughs> Just want to see your kid for the minute they're on stage, but you've got to sit through everyone else's kid as well. It's a bloody nightmare. 
but they had their concerts back because they recently did a concert. My nine-year-old was crying through a whole one-minute performance. I said to her afterwards, I said, what happened? She said, Dad, I made a mistake. I said, who cares? The whole thing looks like a mistake to me. So, again, I didn't say that to her, obviously. She would, she would know. They're great people, though, and, and we're, we're very lucky to have them, you know. So no more kids for us, obviously, though. So that's well, whatever, not obviously, but yes. Um, no, my, at one point my wife did uh, text me while I was on stage. She said, the kids aren't asleep yet, hashtag snip snip. So, um, <laughs> And I got that done, which was great. But, yes, so no more joy. And the three births were different, though. We, we, we had the three gamut of experiences with births. Our first one was a Caesar. Raph is now 13. He was sideways then, and he still is, basically. So, But I thought once it had a Caesar, you had to have a Caesar every time. And my wife said, no, nah, I'm having a natural birth for the next one. I said, honey, you've got the sunroof. You've got to use it. <laughs> no, you don't. Can I say to anyone that the epidural was something I would recommend, yeah? The epidural, I reckon if you've got a credit card, you get it out and you pay wave that, all right? So it's the pain of – for our second child, it was our first and natural birth, Sadie, my wife, we didn't have the epidural because we'd had the laughing gas together. And, again, I haven't had drugs for 30 years, but when she passed that laughing gas bong over, I sucked on it like I was listening to Varna in 1991. And I got as high as a kite <laughs> – but that was a problem for me because that, that laughing gas did not dull any of her pain when the final moment came. And that was a real problem for me because I was flying. And I can tell you, when your partner's screaming in agony as a human's being dragged out of their vagina for the first time, that's a real bad time for you to get the giggles, I can tell you. <laughs> you are a great crowd, though, and uh, we are still in love. And I've got to go on a second. I bloody love this. It's the best gig I've ever done. <laughs> You need to tell your friends, all right? Because I cop, I cop flack on the internet, guys. I don't know if you know, I was on Twitter and uh, during the lockdowns, I was, uh, some of the rules were annoying me. I was in Melbourne for some of the time. There was a curfew. Nine o'clock at night, you couldn't leave the house. That was pretty full on, not going to lie. Not even to put the bins out. Remember one night I hadn't put the bins out. <laughs> and my wife said, you've got to put the bins out. I said, I can't go out there. It's quarter past nine. I'll get pepper sprayed. <laughs> Just throw them over the fence. <laughs> Remember one night I hadn't, we didn't have any bread and the kids going, we need bread for sandwiches. Dad, I was like, can't go. They, you can see the 7-Eleven light from our front yard. And they said, it's open. I said, it's a trap, I tell you. <laughs> anyway, no, we are a great couple and you're a great crowd. <laughs> We still have romantic times. They're not as romantic as they used to be, though. I remember I was busting one of my best moves, I thought. I thought we were in the middle of a really, a really intense situation with my wife. And she looked at me really sternly and she said, mm, what are we going to get Sydney for his birthday? Sydney's our seven-year-old nephew. <laughs> We're in the middle of what I thought was a sexy time. I had my hand on a boob at the time. There's no way that can work in, in, in I, no way I can be saying, I couldn't change the subject if she was busting her best moves on me, I can tell you. Imag no, don't imagine, but just say, honey, what are we going to get Sydney for his birthday? Anyway, um, no, no, it's great to be here, though. You are the best crowd I've ever had. But it's tough, though, when you've got children and you're trying to have sexy times because my wife's got an open-door policy for our bedroom, which can be tricky. She wants everyone to feel safe. I'm like, honey, if they see what's going on in here, they're not going to feel safe, okay? They're like security guards. I remember once my son, we were, must have been in the middle, of, I must have been hitting the right notes apparently, <laughs> and my son starts running down the corridor towards our room like he's Usain Bolt at the Olympics. And we haven't got time to uncouple. He's, got, he's yelling, there's really scary noise going on in there. We're like, we'll run away from the noise. Never run towards danger. He's like, Dad, the noise is freaking me out. I'm like, you walk through that doorway and the noise will be a distant memory. <laughs> Guys, you've been an amazing crowd. Enjoy yourself. Laugh at your problems when you can and get other people to laugh as well. Thanks for having me. Good on you. I'm available for photos of anyone wants to. I don't have a cup of tea, man. Thank you. That was amazing. That was, I'm going to tell my wife. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think you are the funniest person that we've ever had stand on this stage. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so that...